So sometimes I say to my patients, just do it. You don't have to wait, you know, until you've lost your jiggly bit or until your relationship's better. Just do it. The American Psychiatric Association categorized hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD, in its diagnostic and statistical manual called DSM, as any persistent lack of sexual desire that causes a woman distress. Not so, it's not so much the lack of libido that characterizes this disorder, but the amount of anxiety it causes. Even though postmenopause women report less sexual desire, only about 8% are diagnosed with HSDD because they're not distressed. And since sex and intimacy are a meaningful part of a relationship, loss of sexual desire can severely affect a relationship. Is the lack of sexual desire a biological problem or not? And is it a symptom of a bigger problem? It's time to identify the causes in order to understand yourself and your partner. Please welcome Jill Blakely Schnellis. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, you know, uh, tell me what's going on. What, uh, you know, we have, we're talking about the low libido. What are some of the, some of the factors that are causing it? Some of the causes of these, of these low libido? Well, obviously, some people have serious medical problems yes. that cause low libido. We've just talked to Stacey and sure. we've heard about her problems. But it's a much broader problem than that, Dr. Nandy. The statistics are that 40 million adult Americans in couple relationships are not having sex at all. Wow. Isn't that shocking? That's huge. That's, that's a lot of people not having sex. It's why I wrote my book, Sex yes. Again. Um, <laughs> And here's what people tell me in my yes. practice, the Innova Center in New York City. And what's your practice? You're, are you an acupuncturist? I'm an acupuncturist. Um, I have a, we're the largest Chinese medicine practice in the country, in fact, and we're in New York City. We're called oh, the Innova Center. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> And so patients come in and they talk to me about their sex life and they say, Jill, I'm too tired. That's one of the three things they tell me. I'm too tired by the time I've got the kids to bed or by the time I got home from work, I never think about sex. Yeah. Or they tell me I'm too stressed. I can't get my head in the game. I can't focus. I'm doing my to-do list while I'm having sex. That happens. Oh, wow, yeah. that's great. <laughs> that's a woman's secret. You see, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> or they tell Kelly, me- Kelly, I wanna talk to you about that. <laughs> you see, and people laughed in the audience because they recognize that. <laughs> or they no guys, no notice that. No, no, no they did yes. not find that funny. Um, <laughs> or they tell me, I don't feel sexy. I, I worry about the jiggly bit under my arm or my muffin top or my cellulite, and I don't feel good about my body. And one of the things that you know, I think is interesting, yes. Dr. Nandy, is that we live in the most sexualized culture there has ever been. Exactly. We're bombarded with images of sex, you know, in magazines and uh, uh, in the movies. And yet, actually, it doesn't make us feel more sexy. If anything, it makes us a little self-conscious and feel inferior. And, and we're having less sex, less sex than ever before. So it before. makes you less sexy because you're trying to live up to this kind of... This, unrealistic. This, this unrealistic model. You huh? know, I sometimes tell my patients, because my practice is in New York City, so I treat a lot of celebrities. Oh, yes. And I always say, you know, they don't look like that in real exactly. life. <laughs> it's all very good life. I mean, they're lovely, obviously, but they, I mean, they, you know, nobody is completely happy with their On body. On TV, I have a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> but in real life. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Unnecessary roughness, 15 yard penalty. Ah. But go ahead. <laughs> so really, uh, those are the three things, that people are tired, they're stressed, they yes. don't feel good about themselves, and I think that's, I, I, I devoted a chapter to each of those things in my book, Sex you Again. Us, you know, uh, uh, go ahead, please tell us about the book. Well, I wrote this book uh, based on 2,000 year old Taoist wisdom. Yeah. Um, it turns out, I, I read all these ancient Taoist. 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 I mean, most people don't even know how to spell that, tell us no. about that. Well, let me tell you about that. Taoism is an ancient philosophy from China, it's about um, 2,000 years old, yes. sometimes it's called a religion, but it's not really, it's more of a philosophy. It's one of many ancient philosophies from China, in fact. And one of the basic ideas of Taoism is that the happiest and healthiest way to live is in harmony with nature yes. and with the natural flow of energy in the universe. And the Taoists, and you'll recognize these terms, the Taoists um, divided that energy up into yin and yang. Yes. Yin is often associated with feminine, yes. although it's actually much more com complicated than that, and yang with masculine. Uh, and so you can imagine that an ancient philosophy that's all about the interplay of yin and yang, masculine yes. and feminine, um, has very interesting things to say about sex and, and in fact happy healthy sex and how happy healthy sex leads to a happy healthy mind body and spirit. Now how do you incorporate that into the, to people saying they're tired or they're stressed or their body is not quite Well right? I used sexercises from the ancient Taoists because, because well they didn't call them sexercises obviously back in I called them sexercises. Nice. But, but here's <laughs> what I realized and I know this is obvious but I didn't realize this until I started reading the text. Yes. Sex is the only thing that hasn't changed 
changed in 2000 years. Yeah, if you true. think about it, food and medicine and houses and really everything, clothes, it's all changed beyond all recognition. People just found some interesting ways of doing it lately, but uh, well, except for that, I think, I think actually there's nothing new under the sun, and in fact we're doing it the same way as we always did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I realized when I read these texts. And I really went looking for information for my patients in my clinic and, and solutions for them, and, and I found them in some very ancient Chinese wisdom. But, let's say, but maybe some simple tips for people who are watching. What, what things can they do to, to kind of revive their, their libido? Well, the Taoists were all about connection. And one of the things that Stacey talked about that I thought was really interesting was how connected she felt to her husband when she had sex. Yes. And that's what my patients tell me too. So sometimes I say to my patients, just do it. You don't have to wait, you know, until you've lost your jiggly bit or until your relationship's better or, you know, he's less grumpy or um, any of those things. Just do it. Make like the sneaker commercial. It doesn't have to be like it is in the movies, but do it. And they often say to me, Jill, I feel more connected to my, my husband. You were right. It wasn't like it was in the movies, but I, I love him more and I feel more tender towards him and I, I feel more connected afterwards. And that's nice. that you. So, so she's saying that she refers to that feeling of connectedness and yes. make that the focal point rather yes. than you know what am i what am i doing how do i look and have, do i have enough energy so when you when you associate it with that feeling then you feel you feel i think more motivated even about having sex and making that part of your life that's important and, and you share with your partner that same feeling so you say you make that a priority not that oh you know what we'll get to it when you do a b c yes. or d but rather that feeling and, and stacy said it well you know we had that feeling and it lasted for several days exactly. we have to take a break when we come back jill shares with us an exercise called the loop i will i'm excited <laughs> about this it'll be fun but don't go away I'm <laughs> totally Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Partha Nandy, and if you enjoy that video, you're going to love the next one. It's full of incredible information to help you start your health hero journey.